What's going on everybody? In today's Swift tutorial, we're gonna talk about prototyping UI elements in Playgrounds. Now we're gonna show you how to do that and also talk about why it's beneficial and why you would wanna do that. So as you can see on the screen, this is what we're gonna build. We're gonna build this card slide up UI thing. Uh, it's pretty common in the latest iOS's. You see these bottom cards sliding up all over the place. So again, we're gonna build this real quick and then talk about the benefits of prototyping the UI in Playgrounds. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain, a 12 week in person boot camp where you can learn web development, iOS development, and UI UX design. Now, if you know my story, I myself am a boot camp grad, and it was part of my process to become a full time iOS developer, which I have been here in Silicon Valley for the past three years. Now, I even had a member of my community go through the Dev Mountain program, and now he is a full time iOS developer. I even did an interview with him about it on my channel here. You can check that out. And, you know, disclaimer, I did that interview before Dev Mountain reached out to sponsor the channel, so there's no bias there. And uh, you know, he did it. I, like I said, myself am a bootcamp grad. So uh, if you feel a bootcamp is for you, uh, I think it works, and I recommend it. Uh, now, if you are interested in learning more about Dev Mountain, there will be a link in the description. Uh, so check that out. All right, so let's dive right in. We're starting from scratch. Uh, I just did file new playground. We're gonna do a single view. So hit next there. I'm gonna call this just uh, proto type. UI, hit create. So here we are with a basic view controller and up here in the upper right, we're gonna open up our assistant editor and that is going to be our live view. As you can see here on line 22, we're setting the current live view to the view controller. We're gonna make this smaller because we don't need it to be that large. And if I go ahead and run the playground, you're going to see here's our view controller, hello world with the label here that is set up there. That's what you get from the start. We don't want that. We're gonna create our own stuff, get rid of this label, get rid of that sub view. Uh, so here we have just our basic view and we're gonna make our view black because our card is going to be white. So we don't wanna, you know, you wanna be able to see the card. Uh, and then let's get rid of this comment cause I don't like clutter, that's why. So here we are with our basic setup. Let's start coding. I'm gonna pop up on the screen what the final thing looks like because if you're prototyping UI, you, you should have at least a rough design in your mind uh, or drawn out or in sketch or maybe even a full blown pixel perfect design from a designer. Um, either way, you shouldn't be just coming in here all willy nilly. But uh, so I'm gonna put that up there and let's look at what we're going to need. So as you can see, we're gonna need a card view, a thumbnail of the video, we're gonna need the title of the video, we're gonna need the watch now button, and then up top, we're gonna to need the animate button. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create all those elements, fast forward the typing, and uh, you know we'll come back. All right, so here we have the initialization of all the elements we're gonna need, and then we're gonna configure those later on uh, in the tutorial. So now that we have that, the first thing we're gonna build is actually the white card view. That is the, the base of our UI here. So if I hit uh, return here a couple times, do uh, funk setup card view. Now, the first thing we wanna do is uh, add it to the sub view. So when you're doing this programmatically, uh, you need to add your uh, sub view to the views. I always say that backwards. Uh, so view.add sub view, and then we wanna add card view and then just a couple basic setups here so we want uh we want the background color to be white so card view dot background color equals uh dot white and then we want to have the uh corner radius because it's curved to make it look like that card so card view dot layer dot corner radius uh equals and then the corner radius is 12. so that's some basic setup the next thing we need to do is programmatically set the constraints now uh if you saw a recent video of mine programmatic ui for beginners this is going to be very familiar and a lot of the other elements we're going to be doing very similar stuff so we're just gonna do the long way to set up the card view. The other elements, I'm just gonna copy and paste in code and we'll talk about it just to save time and keep the tutorial moving along. So uh, we need to set up the constraints on the card view. So uh, set up card view constraints. And then the first thing you do when you're doing programmatic constraints is card view. And then I just start typing masking and you get this super long thing, translate auto sizing mask into constraints. Basically this says, use auto layout, uh, but you wanna make that equal to false. And uh, we're gonna do card view leading anchor dot constraint. Uh, we want it to be equal to with a constant. And again, I'm kind of breezing through this because I did the prototyping UI for beginners. Um, so if this is kind of over your head, check out that video, we go into it in depth. But we want this pin to the view dot leading anchor, and we want that constant to be 10. And then you do dot is active equals true. Enter, and then again, let's make this bigger so we don't get that wrapping as, as much as possible. Uh, same thing with the trailing anchor, 
string equal to view dot trailing. And again, if this is too slow for you, we're not going to do this for every single element, just this first one to set the stage. And then we'll talk about more later. Uh, is true. And now for the height, we're just gonna have a fixed height on all devices here. So car view dot height anchor dot constant. Uh, and we're just gonna make that 360. Again, pretend we got this from the designer. I know 360 works out, but you may have to play with this when you're making your own again, or the designer may have it for you. So next we have the card view bottom constraint. Now this is where it gets interesting because this is what we're going to animate up. So you get that, you know, animation that you saw in the intro. So uh, let's go ahead and create our variable for that because we need this to animate it. If you saw my animating constraints video, this is going to be familiar. If you haven't seen that video, come on, what are you doing? Uh, so var uh, card view bottom constraint, and this is of type, I hate typing around this mic. I gotta, I gotta get one of those boom arms. Anyway, ns layout constraint, and now we set that equal to this. So card view bottom constraint equals card view dot bottom anchor uh, dot constraint again equal to with constant we want it to be equal to the view dot bottom anchor and the constant we want it just way down so we'll put it 600 so this is way down so we're going to animate it up right you don't want to start it on the screen you want to start it off the screen to push it up uh, so then we just do card view bottom constraint dot is active equals true and actually just to make sure we see we have it let's put the constant at um negative 10 so we want it 10 points up from the bottom and let's call setup card view uh, in load view setup card view and then now when we run this we should see the card it's not going to animate we haven't set that up yet but we should see the card show up over here on the right and we don't that's because i didn't call setup constraints so in here uh, let's call setup uh, card view constraints now when we run it there we go, there's the card view, as you can see in its full glory. Now, if you have a keen eye, you may notice that this is taking up like half the view. This, when you saw the preview, this looked like the iPhone X size, where this looks like more of an iPhone 8 normal size. That's because here in this playground live view, we haven't configured that yet. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let VC, short for view controller, equal uh, my view controller, like we have down here. And then you set uh, VC dot preferred content size, preferred content size. And this is gonna take in a CG size, and this is where you have to customize it a little bit, and it's gonna pass in two CG floats, a width and a height. Now you can look this up for all the devices, and you'll see here later in the tutorial, we're gonna play around with this, but the width of an iPhone X is 375, and the height is 812. And just do, you know, just so we know what we're playing with here. And then we wanna set this equal to VC, this variable we declared here on line 40, uh, 44. Now when we run it, we should get the taller view and the card won't take up so much of the uh, space. But it's interesting, and this is another benefit to prototyping in Playgrounds, once you know all those, and there's other ways to do this, but once you know the height and width, like so for example, an iPhone 5 or an iPhone SE, the really smaller phone is 320 by 568, I believe. So now when we run it, you can see the card will take up, you know, almost the whole screen, if you can see here on the right. So uh, you'll see this come into play once we, you know, uh, finish out the UI, but you can easily switch between uh, the different phone sizes to verify your UI uh, as you go. Again, one of the benefits to rapidly prototyping. You can imagine when you're building your app, you have to build and run, depending on how big your project is, that could take a while. Uh, and you, maybe you have to navigate to that specific screen, or if you set something up to where it skips all the navigation, that's just extra code and time. So rapid iteration is one of the main benefits to uh, prototyping in Playgrounds. So now I'm gonna bring in the other UI elements, all the buttons in the images, and uh, we'll talk about the code, but for the sake of speeding this up and not having it be an incredibly boring uh, tutorial, I'm gonna time-lapse me doing it, and then I'll just explain the code quickly. It is very, very similar to what we just did in the setup card view constraints. And if you really wanna deep dive into programmatic UI, check out my beginner programmatic UI tutorial. All right, now that I've got all that mundane constraint code, copy and paste it in, we're gonna run through it. Uh, before I run through it real quick, let's run it, because as I run through it, it'll be easier with the visual up there and to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. We're gonna see no thumbnail. My bad, I forgot. Pull up, open our left pane here under this resources. Any images you're going to use uh, in your playground, just like putting it in your assets folder in Xcode, you gotta put it in there. So let's go ahead and pull in the image here. Finder, uh, Dropbox. YouTube, you're gonna see all my, my thumbnails, yay. Uh, we want the, the sure, we'll go with the 2018 setup. So you just drag that in there into the research uh, resources folder. I'm going to have to copy. I know the, the demo had the, uh, 
the Xcode Tips PNG, but you know what? This was at the top of the list. So now when we run it, there we go. There's the Xcode Tips and Tricks thumbnail. Well, now we gotta change the title, man. 2018 setup. As you can see right here, we're, we're prototyping the UI in real time. Quick changes, there you go. So let's walk through this constraint code real quick and then we'll talk about the pros and cons and show you some examples of that. This was the same, I just added, I just called on my functions. So set up video image view. Uh, basically I'm adding the sub view of video image view to the card view. Remember I added the card view to the view. So we're putting all this stuff inside the, the white card view. Uh, basic corner radius of eight, as you can see on the image, it is a uh, curve. You can play with this all you want if you wanted, you know, corner radius of zero. And again, we're gonna, as I walk through this, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly change things, the prototype, and it's real quick. Again, imagine in your Xcode, you have to build and run, navigate to the screen. It's just so slow. You know, if I wanna mess around with, you know, corner radius of 50, you just wanna keep playing around with your eye to see what that looks like. Now you got this bubbly looking thing. We wanna go back to 12, uh, hit play. There we go. And then in each, you know, setup video image view, I am also calling the set video image constraints. Now, I wanna talk about the video image constraints because there is one interesting piece of constraints that you're not gonna use all the time. And that is constraining something, you know, using an aspect ratio. So let's go to the setup video image constraints here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller just for a little bit so we can get rid of all this wrapping. Here we go, the height anchor dot constraint is the video image view dot width anchor, right? So the width is going to be dynamic based on how wide the phone screen is, right? Like we demonstrated earlier, the iPhone X screen is wider than the iPhone SE screen. So as that stretches, the width of the video image will stretch because you see we're pinning it uh, to the card view with 30 padding on each side. So we want our height to maintain the aspect ratio. Uh, that's the 16 by nine, which the thumbnails are, the YouTube video thumbnails. So for the multiply, so again, we wanna make it equal, equal to the video image view width, which is gonna be dynamic, but we wanna add a multiplier to that to keep the same aspect ratio. And that multiplier is the 16 by nine, but in this case, you have to kind of flip it, the, the nine uh, divided by 16, and that will always keep the same aspect ratio on the image uh, you know, no matter what the width is. That's pretty much the only interesting constraint. All the other constraints on the, you know, like the title label is the basic, you know, leading anchor, trailing height, top anchor. All these are pretty straightforward. Again, I'm not gonna do a deep dive into them uh, just because it would be boring. <laughs> and if you wanna do a deep dive, check out the programmatic UI video. Uh, so these constraints are pretty straightforward. And again, like I just said, the power of playgrounds is rapidly prototyping. Maybe you wanna change the color of your watch now button. So here we are in the setup watch button function. Uh, you know, I don't want red. I want this to be green with a corner radius again of, well, I know the height is 50, so set the corner radius to 25. Uh, we're kind of hard coding that just for the sake of this tutorial, but this will give me the rounded button and now it's green. I don't like the way that looks, uh, you know, I don't know. Orange, run it again. So you're, you're getting the idea, just super rapid prototyping, changing font size. Once you have all the code set up, now you can just rapidly prototype through it. And the benefit is you could be sitting with your designer. Maybe you just have some rough designs and hey, let, let's play around with this. They can sit next to you and what about doing this? What about this? What about adjusting this color, this height, this corner radius? And you can just rapidly iterate on these designs. And the benefit is once you've got it all figured out, like you have uh, everything you want. So let's take this back uh, to what we had. If you're doing your UI programmatically, the benefit of doing this is you you have a view controller here. Like this is a class, my view controller, everything's built. Uh, now to be fair, you'd probably want to refactor this a little bit. Uh, we're not going to get into that now, but card view, this whole card view uh, you see here, this this uh, white you know card, I would make that a subclass called you know slide up card view or whatever. And all that logic would go in the card view subclass of a UI view. But you get the idea. Uh, you can just copy and paste this into your project and you're good to go. You rapidly iterated in the playground and uh, just pulled it in there. And like I mentioned earlier, while we're down here with this size here, let's change it back to the iPhone 5 size. So 320 by 568, because we all know that little iPhone 5 slash SE is always a pain when your designs are built for the iPhone you know, 10. It's always a pain to try to make it look good on this as well. So this is powerful to just make sure you test your designs on that as well. So you can see the animate button, card slides up, still looks okay even on the iPhone 5. We're good to go there. Uh, so again, that is the power of prototyping in Playgrounds. You can rapidly iterate much faster than if you were doing it in your Xcode project. And then if you are doing it programmatically, your UI, you can just copy and paste this entire thing once you're good to go into your project and then maybe refactor a little bit and you're good to go. So 
If you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out Swift news every Monday in a tutorial or two throughout the week. See you in the next one.